Okay, so Ishkala and I are just connecting for the first time. I so I saw you on Instagram. You came through my whatever it's called on Instagram timeline feed, whatever that is, uh -huh. and it was the video of a workshop you were teaching where you were um, your participants were drawing the sacred geometric mandalas just with look like pencil on paper, and yeah. I was like oh, that looks amazing because I do lots of mandalas and sacred geometry and so I reached out to you so that was feels like months ago <laughs> yeah months. it was a little while a little ways back when we were trying to find a good time it was also like right before the holidays picked up so yeah exactly yeah. Right. I was in Florida and I ordered some of your magical stickers your art is amazing Mm -hmm. And I just like I'm curious the the visionary art you know is is such a there's a spectrum right um, of that but how like what was your journey how did you start have you like did you always create art in that way or <laughs> tell us a little bit about your sure story. Um, so I, I grew up in Northern California and on a, on a ranch in Mendocino County. Mm. So I was just very much immersed in nature and rural, rural area. And, um, I have been drawing since I was very little, just always gravitated towards making art all the time and like just running around outside and. Well, I, I, I jokingly tell people that I was raised by cats <laughs> because I would follow them around my favorite cat, Ty. I'd follow him around for like in the summer, like all day long and just do whatever the cat did. And we would, yeah, we would spend a lot of time like that. And I feel like looking back on that, it's kind of a funny joke, but it's also, um, it's really telling of kind of how I grew up with, with, um, a lot of nature and just spending a lot of time in the trees and spending a lot of time in the grass and a lot of time with animals. And um, my parents were really encouraging and supportive of my drawing wherever we were and whatever we were doing. Um, I used to trace all kinds of images when I was little. Um, we used to get a zoo books magazine. We had a zoo book subscription. And so I would draw a lot from the zoo books and trace a lot of different kinds of animals. And I drew lots and lots of unicorns, <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of imaginary, just, you know, just, just made up imaginary scenes. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, lots of fairies and all kinds of things that just came to me, you know, from the magical realms. Oh, there's Cosmo. We have a new dog. Yay. <laughs> no problem. So, uh, and then as I grew up, uh, as I got older, we had, uh, we had a guest artist who came to our elementary school and got us involved in making a mural in our school and having all the different students participating in that, which was really exciting. And she also got us uh, using watercolor and we had, I participated in my first art show, which I think was, it was in sixth grade. And we just, you know, it was just like in our classroom and, um, and we had a little art show and uh, but it was really meaningful to me. And I, those are the things that I remember from when I was growing up that really impacted me. And, and even just the simple act of selling a watercolor piece for like 20 bucks to my sixth grade teacher was very exciting. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, and then when I went through junior high and high school, I took art and drama and I was in band and I'm taking piano lessons, lots of art and music. <clears throat> um, but I also excelled in math a lot and I was usually like a year ahead in math. Mm. So my just to give a little more background too my dad is an amazing artist and 
um, he did a lot of mural projects when he was younger and a lot of illustrative graphic design back before computers projects for people. So just, you know, drawing by hand. And, um, and he was also a practicing architect. So he had a lot of uh, experience and, and created his own design build company and uh, did a lot of, of design and, and building. Just wanted to see it all through to the very end, like do all of it. So design all of it and build it. <laughs> right, right, like a true artist. <laughs> yeah, and then my mom, she's, she's very creative too and she she her kind of her art has been they my parents both had a uh, a floral a dried flower arrangement company for mm -hmm. about six years when mm -hmm. I was growing up we also had vineyards and um, we would contract to sell our grapes to different vineyards in the area to make wine and we would prune the canes every year. And so they started making reeds and had a, a great business for about six years selling nationwide. And um, so my mom's always been kind of more of a 3D artist in a lot of ways. And now she's a pastry chef. So she makes lots of really beautiful desserts. And um, yeah, and so I, I grew up, I also did a lot of portraits did a lot of just a lot of drawing from real life too so that I could learn how light and shadow worked and how to you know get into it I feel like at a certain point around 10th grade my drawing really changed and I started taking a lot more risks and was feeling braver with really um exploring the range and depth of contrast of light and shadow and all of that, mm -hmm. which also correlated to when my parents got divorced. So mm -hmm. I feel like that as a challenge for me, not knowing that that's what was happening at the time is mm -hmm. actually my way of, of coping and, and getting through that. <clears throat> and it actually catapulted me into another, um, level of my creativity mm -hmm. and then I went to school for university in pursued architecture okay. and um, I went to a program at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo in, in Central California and there I chose all of the really like out of the box professors and uh, we did a lot of theory. We we're really into a lot of interesting design theory. And at that school, I felt like every project we were doing for our architecture design, our core classes was like one big art project. It was mm. very drawing focused and they really emphasized that in the program I actually didn't even have to, I wasn't required to learn CAD. That was something that we could learn while we were in school or just in the internships afterwards because that wasn't their focus. The focus is like, can you learn how to work with certain constraints and desires that people have to create a warm and welcoming space that's meaningful, that um, is also green and and working and learning about natural building materials and things like that. So I got a lot of drawing practice during those years too. Nice. Um, <clears throat> however, in my fourth year, I studied abroad and I lived in Paris for that year. And it was kind of like this guinea pig uh, program because most of my friends went to a program in Florence, Italy. And it was like CSU Florence, <laughs> very homogenized, just right. more of America in their little bubble kind of in a way. And a lot of that also in Copenhagen. But there was this program in, pa in Paris that was very new. That was basically with all French students, some other international students. And um, it was its second year. And I decided to go and be part of the experiment <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> and really um, immerse myself into a whole new world and learn a new language and really 
um, <clears throat> experience what it was like to be a foreigner somewhere for the first time, mm -hmm. which was really enlightening and um, also really lonely at times. I, yeah, I, I experienced a very wide, wide range of experience and emotions during that time. And again, I had my trusty journal <laughs> right? yeah. that I kept for, since I was little, I've always had a journal that I've kept regularly and just writing and, and drawing and had some of the most profound and romantic experiences of my life, just traveling by myself, like with myself and communing with these amazing places that I'd never been to before. I never never seen and and just my heart opens real big and um at the end of that trip I went to um Portugal and had an awakening mm. which yeah. I think is very linked actually to that place the geographical place that I was for whatever reason. where in Portugal the very southern point the Algarve <laughs> Yeah, which is where a lot of legends and stories point to that being like the edge of the world for yeah for a time. Um, I have a scar on my forehead from the Algarve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's gorgeous. It's so uh -huh. beautiful. The rock formations and and the waters there. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also it was a combination of. Um, Coming to that place, it was at the end of that whole year and had been traveling a lot solo, just all over Europe. And I I was traveling, my brother came out just for the last part of my of my time out there to, to travel with me for a few weeks. And when we were in Portugal, we, we got off the train, we were looking for a place to stay. And um we just found like a little pensione with, but from this woman that was at the train station, which is kind of classic scene. And we we went to her little pensione. It was very hot, very stuffy, and just like, oh, I don't want to be in here. And I wanted to find a, a, a cool hostel to to stay at. And um, and while we were there, I opened the window just to try and get some air in the room. And we heard, I could see a group of of people you know young young adults in their 20s hanging out on on the rooftop of a building a, a few buildings over and they were they were laughing and making music and eating and it just looked like such a great scene and so we went the next day I was like I don't know what that place is but if it's a hostel that's where we're going yeah right. so the next day we went and they had two beds open and uh and we stayed at this hostel and it was kind of small it was only about 20 people but everyone, and I had been to tons of hostels that year, but everyone in this hostel from all over the world were spending time together as a group, like as a little family. And it was very unique. It was a very unique situation. And I feel like, and so we were, we were eating together, we were going to the farmer's markets together and getting our, our food together. We were playing silly games and and making music and art and going to the beaches together and <clears throat> and it was my first real taste of like what um what community it could feel like mm. and to go deep with people that I hadn't even really known for very long and to feel like that sense of family and one of the last nights that I was there is when my heart just kind of blasted open and I was able to feel and experience for the first time what it was like to see God in everyone and to feel that in myself for the first time and to feel it continuously <laughs> and not just as a glimpse and then yeah and then I came home and there's a lot more to the story I know I'm, I'm going going long here but um my art shifted a lot after that yeah and um and that informed my practice and I decided that I would continue 
my thesis year was uh, natural building and eco village design. But I knew that when I finished the program that I really wanted to pursue art and figure out how I could pursue it as a way for healing for myself and for others. And, um, mm -hmm. and still do architecture and I'm still weaving that into what I'm doing even today. But um, that my true love is, is art, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, I feel this, this thread, right, of nature, the power of the land and the earth and the animals, you know, is such a beautiful foundation. And then also, you know, somehow that land in Southern Portugal, you know, creating such a space. Uh, I mean, you know, I've been there. It's, you know, it's elemental and the light and, you know, being out in a different community, all those things. And then in the middle, you know, that, that awareness of the healing aspect of art and coming back from Portugal and wanting to capture. I mean, I talk a lot about, you know, painting energy into our paintings and that, that energy never goes away. And, you know, sensing that desire of yours to create or share that energy of, of just the oneness of the community of that unconditional love that goes and goes and goes through your art, uh, whether the image would be described as that or not, that's in, <laughs> work, you know? Yeah. We get to infuse our work with that. It's, it's, I think it's really palpable actually. Yeah. And even if it's, um, even if the story that we have that goes with a certain, you know, piece mm -hmm. that we create is, is the story that or the experience that other people, you know, like the story that it, the emerges when other people are experiencing the art, it might be different. There might be a lot of different things that emerge, but there's, there is a feeling of healing that I've experienced and witnessed that many people have had, but I think it's because the art is imbued with that care, with that kind of attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the sacred geometry, you know, when I, um, my latest book, 30 Days to Unstoppable, Metatron's Cube is the, the yantra for that book. And um, I saw in a meditation, like understood that sacred geometry could be this bridge between, you know, the logical, rational mind that resists all change. And then the intuitive, creative, infinite mind that is open to the mystery and the oneness and everything. And so that became, you know, the, the yantra, like the symbol to um, organize the entire teaching. And mm -hmm. um, recently, just like last week had a, one of those moments, you know, when you're just waking up, you're still kind of in that liminal space. And it was like, almost seeing this Metatron's cube floating in my room somehow and, and a me peeking through one of the spheres. And it was just this awareness like, oh, they sent Metatron's cube to like create this connection, you know? And I, it was just this involuntary spontaneous affirmation of kind of that original aha back in 2018. But um, you know, nature is organized by the sacred geometry and, um, and of course the architecture drawing is so precise, right. And drawing sacred geometry is very precise. And, um, anyway, it's just, you can see this mandala of connections and elements circling around. Uh, I grew yeah. up in Chicago climbing trees, you know, in the neighborhood. But when I moved out here to Northeast Oregon, um, you know, it's 2 million acres, 7,000 people. And we have our own mountain chain and lakes and snake river and canyons and all that. And, and the earth, the, the nature changed me. It, it, it aligned me to a different aspect of myself for sure. And um and, you know, this is all so interrelated. Uh, nature's always in that oneness, you know, connected to the, the divine yeah. and the underlying spirit and the yeah. opportunity to immerse ourselves in it is so inspiring, so healing. So I can, I can see that in all of your artwork, of course. Yeah, I feel like it has 
I feel very blessed to have grown up in that kind of environment. And I know that a lot of people who haven't grown up that way um, are definitely seeking it out when mm -hmm. they're older and, um, and really need that, especially for people who are continuing to live in an urban environment that that people get out <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to experience more of that nature and that deeper sense of connection to all that is and that um and a lot of a lot of what I talk about too is is that connection to awe and and wonder Mm -hmm. because nature is so good at doing that we can see a, a gorgeous sunset or sunrise or gaze at the starry night sky or behold like a newborn baby or a beautiful tree or just just there's so much um in nature that can that can that can create that sense of awe and when we feel that, we don't, a lot of people don't even recognize or realize it's happening, but it's literally making, it's, it's creating um, space in the mind. Because all of a sudden, everything that we might be thinking um, kind of just disappears. And, um, and we're, we're able to tap into this like place of true presence mm -hmm. and just right there and right. right there in this place of like heart energy it's yeah. like <laughs> and I feel like that's also what beautiful art can do in people's lives too it's totally inexplainable we don't have to know how it's done or how it works and we can just behold a thing of beauty and it's just mind-blowing yeah. it's literally blows blows the mind away so there is no mind <laughs> Right. And we can just experience life as, as it's meant to be experienced. <clears throat> I love that because that's so much of the, you know, the, the dis-ease in the world is just this overthinking, this overemphasis on the rational mind. And it's not that the rational mind is good or bad, right or wrong. It's just that too much of it is too much, just like too much of the other would, would make it hard to exist in this physical reality. Um, but how to create for yourself these spaces in your life on a daily basis where you can be in awe, where you can, you know, dissolve into the present moment, where you can engage in musings, imagery, imaginations that are just purely being, you know, that don't have like a point or aren't part of the to-do list because it's good for you on so many levels, you know, it expands everything. Um, it's like shifting off this linear track into this, you know, mandala kaleidoscope <laughs> kind of experience. And, yeah. you know, I can get that awe, I'll be painting in the layers and layers and, you know, two layers will intersect and the colors peeking through. And I just, am like, yeah. like I make, yeah these like better sounds you know and it's like yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's just color yeah. it's just color you know that it's for me has good. always been the thing color 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 yeah color in layers yeah for sure um and what's really fun about that too is that you know because we get that sense when we're making the art that um certain pieces come together or you get to a certain place where you just get wowed like that Mm -hmm. And it creates more of that um, like observer quality in our painting process, which is what we're talking about all the time with, in terms of meditation, to mm -hmm. be able to like step outside of our self enough so like everything isn't so subjective and we can really just actually witness what's happening. Yes. And that's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love Part. after a really good painting session um I, I will often sit and and just gaze and meditate and commune with the piece because mm -hmm. it's just feeding me so much um just to be with it and to 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 see what's emerging and to be in conversation like that um and it also inspires that 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 awe and wonder piece 
inspires ideas really wonderful ideas that's the place like when we give ourselves that kind of space in our lives to to rest and or to do things for play or just yeah to 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 take in the beauty um then that spaciousness creates uh, it creates a, a fertile ground for new things to emerge and um and whether if it's a man-made thing then it gives us inspiration too in a way that like wow a human being made that I want to make things like that how can like what do I want to create in life to feel that that can that can create that kind of inspiration that can create that kind of joy um, or that relatability or whatever it is that um, that really strikes your your heart <clears throat> yeah I've always been interested since the very beginning in in the practicality of having a creative practice you know, so I opened my art center, Bricks and Mortar in Nashville, Tennessee in 1996. So this is before there were like drop-in art centers or, you know, the drop-in pottery, the paint your own pottery or anything like that. It was like, no one had, people were very confused, you know, and they called up asking if I had like yoga and Tai Chi classes. And I'm like, no, it's working out your right brain muscle, you know? And so I was always reading books um, to help me remember into, because you know, I went from selling books door to door after college to opening an art center and had never painted on a canvas when I opened the doors the first day. Like it was just bizarre. The whole thing was. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so fun. It was so fun. And I freaked people out and it's almost like they couldn't even hear me when I said I had no art training because it didn't compute, you know, like I was just being humble or something. It's like, no, literally. Uh, like the teachers, when the, the oil painting teacher um, came, she was this amazing woman and she taught at a local design college and she either called me or walked in the door because there was no like email, people weren't using email, there was no social media, you know, people just heard I was opening. Some people like hated me and were like, who the hell does she think she is? You know, I was like 26 years old no art background coming into Nashville. There was still very much like, where are you from? Who's your daddy? Like just tradition and all of that. And I'm showing up and going to these art meetings. Like I'm, wait, I'm opening an art center and no, nope, I don't paint. I don't, you know, I mean, it just, people were <laughs> just confused. And um, this woman, Gwendolyn taught oil painting. She was so gracious and I'm in the class, right? Cause I'm learning. And she started to talk about opposite colors and I looked at her like what are opposite colors you know and she's just like like really you own this place and um and I freaked out about opposite colors like I used to talk about them all 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 the time um but so one of the books I was reading at, at one point early on was the breakout principle by Dr. Herbert Benson who started doing neuroscience research in the 70s and in his book, he's talking about, you know, if you want that aha, that breakthrough, that, you know, that idea that, you know, stroke of insight that, of course, there's the left brain work, you know, like research or practice or developing the skills or whatever. But then he said to get that breakout, you want to sever all previous thought processes, get out of your left brain in order to have that breakout. And his first example is of this, like, you know, high powered business consultant in New York who meets with his client and goes through all the, you know, spreadsheets and the flows and all that. And then he goes back to his hotel room to needlepoint to get his Shazam moment. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, this is why you paint. This is why you needlepoint or weave or sculpt or clay or whatever. It's like, it makes, it creates space in your life for those Shazam moments, mm. ahas, the, mm. you know, it gives uh, your mind time to relax and soften its focus and get out of that linear realm. And literally right before that stroke of insight, there's a spike in gamma brainwaves, which are distinct because the entire neocortex lights up. 
And they found that if you're already in your right hemisphere, you know, you're already doing something that is more creative and intuitive and present moment, that you have an easier time getting to that gamma brainwave. Um, you know, so the arts are so vital to everything, you know, to humanity shifting and letting go of this old paradigm and story, as well as each of us individually finding that wellness and peace and, and, and being able to thrive in a world that's, you know, very tumultuous and where there's a lot of unknown and where we've been taught to like anchor into the external world, you know, and if we do this, this, and this, then things will be okay. And that's not there anymore. And it's challenging unless you've got this kind of creative energy flowing through or understand how to balance, understand that there's even that part of you, you know, I'm not creative. I can't even draw a straight line. It's like, <laughs> you're all creating in each and every moment. You're either doing it with yeah. or without awareness. Yeah. So let's do it with awareness, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so when I saw your mandala drawings on Instagram, you know, creating uh, an easy, you know, pencil and paper, compass, whatever to, to connect to that sacred geometry, the design, the expression, um, the, you know, it's like walking a labyrinth every time you mm -hmm. create a mandala or, or use the sacred geometry. It's, it's such yeah. good medicine. So thank yeah. You. And I, I, um, I've been painting, I, I, I grew up drawing mostly and I, and I played with different mediums <clears throat> in those electives and you know like junior high high school right right um but like graphite drawing has always been my go-to and and um and then I started painting in, in winter solstice of 2008 and I yeah just felt like time and and I was getting a lot of questions from community too like are you interested in playing with color or like I wonder what this would look like in color. And, and I was getting a little more curious about it too. I was like, okay, well, I'll start painting. And I, and I got inspired by a piece that I drew in a, in an art class um, that I, that I took mostly just because I wanted to be with other people in a studio and make art, right. <laughs> hang out with other people <laughs> making art. And, um, and I made this piece that inspired me. I was like, I'm gonna paint this. This is the one. And um, so I got a canvas and I got some paints and I didn't, I, I drew the whole thing out with pencil on the canvas first. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I don't know exactly what I'm doing but I'm just gonna like start with what I know and I just drew it out. I even was, I think I even did like some shading and stuff <laughs> and then painted all over it. And of course, you know, some of the, the pencil worked its way into the paints and, and um, which I actually really liked because it kind of created this whole kind of like more muted tone throughout the whole piece. And yeah. um, that was this, this piece. So I also have some pieces here to show people like what it oh, is yeah. that we're talking about. Wow. And were you so, painting with acrylic or watercolor? Or? Yeah, it's acrylic. It's yeah. Wow. The glare on it because of the glasses here. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, this was this was that piece. And um and of course once I started actually creating it on the canvas, it it changed from the original drawing, mm -hmm. which I think is a natural tendency of yeah creativity it's it's not necessarily going to be the same thing every time so naturally as I went from the 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 drawing that inspired it it went into um, mm. something and how big was that originally 18 by 24 okay yeah. yeah and I I drew this figure and then this was the one that changed as I drew it out and then um and then I got this like strong dragon serpentine kind of energy in the field and I and that's so that's like part of the discovery for me is I don't know what who these beings were when I started making them yeah um, 
but I, once the dragon energy started coming in, then I just started having a bunch of conversations with my friends and community over the next couple of weeks, like, what are these beings? Who are these beings? What is the message here? What's the story? And, and getting a, and I really enjoy that part of the creative process, especially when things are kind of coming into form like that with, mm -hmm. with other people to see what's emerging kind of all together. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, and I was also studying, I had just started studying Tibetan Buddhism and really getting into a lot of a lot of that in, in my practices and learning a lot of the learning about all the different deities and and it just hit me that that next week in in our conversations that this for me in my experience is my own very non-traditional uh, rendition and celebration of Kuan Yin and in mm -hmm. Buddhism Kuan Yin as you may probably already know uh, but for people who don't know, uh, Kuan Yin is the goddess, is, is a divine mother archetype, divine mother goddess, and she's the goddess of compassion and mercy, and she's often, and she's the element of water, so she's all blue here, and she's often pictured holding a vase filled with healing waters, and she rides on dragons. So you've yes. got the dragon kind of swirling around behind them with its tail curving around here to the front. And so that made that, and that was the dragon energy that I was feeling. Yeah. And then here we have green Tara. Mm -hmm. And that's also another deity in the, in the Buddhist traditions. And the green Tara, there's 21 different emanations of the Tara. Mm -hmm. And the green Tara is like the youthful maiden of the Taras. She's the one who's usually sitting in half lotus position with one foot up and one foot down at the ready, ready to come to the rescue at any moment. And she's that spirit of, of navigation from like, like to the realm of enlightenment, um, helping us to get there. Yeah. And um, a lot of people will, will, will do practices with Kuan Yin uh, to conceive children, um, to develop more compassion in their lives, to heal their relationship with their mom. There's so many different ways to work with the Kuan Yin energy. And um, yeah, so that's, that's part of the mythology slash corroboration that I was experiencing as I was going, which I feel like a lot of artists, especially when we're able to um, just kind of get out of our own way in mm -hmm. the process and, and uh, leave enough um, translucency, transparency in the layers we're exploring to, um, and it's, this is something I'm inspired by a uh, Joseph Campbell quote, um, something like to have enough translucency to let enough of the light come through yeah. um, in, our, in our experience. So that whatever it is that we're doing, that we can relinquish enough control and and really surrender to the magic of the universe, which also and all that that applies to so many different ways that we navigate the world to um, to be able to tap into the magic of the universe, um, and it's really freeing. Mm -hmm. because then we realize I don't know how this is going to happen I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess or how I'm going to create this next this thing we don't have to worry so much about that we can just take the next step next small step have a vision of the horizon and then give the rest up to spirit or god or the universe or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> and we can have so much more fun in the process and um, and get to actually experience and actually notice the miracles that are unfolding. Yeah. That's why I love guiding people into a painting practice because it's a place where you can go to practice and feel what it's like to surrender, to, to lean into that transparency and to let go of control, you know, practice that at the canvas because it's, you know, most of the people I work with have, there's no way their painting practice is at all connected to how they earn a living or anything else. You know, this is purely 
separate from that. And so that concept that you just described can be very abstract and hard for people to understand. You have to experience it. And so where can you experience it? You know, you can experience it perhaps like surfing or paragliding or painting or dancing or playing music, right? Um, but uh, experiencing it, getting to know it, feeling it so that you can then call on it in other areas of your life where maybe you have been, you know, trying to control it too much. So, okay, I have to ask in your painting though, below Tara, there, is there an animal ally there coming below? Oh, um, in this piece? Yes. Yeah. This, this and no, the Tara, no, on the other. Yeah. Yeah. So this this is like a a little seed. I this looks to me like a walnut seed or a peach pit. Actually, this is like that the her skirt. See, see I see an owl there. Do you all see an owl? You guys know <laughs> I see owls everywhere. Yeah, I could see that. It definitely looks like or just like some the two eyes, two eyes, and this what strange, the, awesome nose here. Yeah. Um, okay, I had to ask because I'm a big yeah. owl. Big yeah, owl. and that's to for me. That's how I also was able to tune into the concept that this is green Tara, um, because the green Tara is also the the earth element, and she's the little seed sprite that's fluttering up to the divine mother to receive the mother's blessings and this little kiss, and then her her waters are like bubbling up with the kiss, and I imagine them in in the next moment that the water is trickling down into these little these little vessels in the seed and, and nourishing her. Yeah, yeah. One of my online programs, I launched it in Jeez. September, 2020 as a 22-day Tara painting meditation challenge. So we paint a layer and an as, you know, each, for each aspect we paint onto the canvas and paint a big Tara. So, awesome. yeah, so we're, we're into Tara in this community. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and one of the things that I, one of the things I've been really loving teaching uh, in, in my workshops is, is bring people back to the basics, because it's like, okay, what, like for me, what was the beginning for me, and like, how can I get back into my beginner's mind, and, um, yeah. and find a way that feels um, simple, more simple and accessible for people who are just exploring these things for the first time. And that's mm -hmm. also why I love to work with the sacred geometry because one of, and because I have so much experience with the geometry as a way, um, as a way for me to, to calm the mind. And, mm -hmm. um, and it does engage both hemispheres. Yes. And it's so meditative when, a lot of people, at least from from my generation and many generations, probably, um, everyone had to take a geometry class in high school. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel really lucky because when I was in geometry during that time is when my parents were getting divorced. And I, so I was, tra I transferred schools. Hmm. and then I transferred back and actually I was homeschooling and then I moved to a new school with my mom for a little while and then I went back to my old school <laughs> but during that time at that new school I got to take geometry with this incredible teacher he was just so so vibrant so loving his job and working with students and he was very hands-on mm -hmm. so we were just drawing constantly in his class and just like learning about all the geometry through just you know using a compass and a ruler Ah, I wanted that geometry class. I, <laughs> yeah. I was doing proofs and I didn't get that yeah. at all. Yeah, well, it was fascinating because I actually, I, I was doing all of that. And then at the end of that semester, quarter or whatever it was, I transferred back to my old school with my other math teacher who I also really loved, but she has a completely different approach. Mm -hmm. And so I got to experience like the end of that geometry class with her and doing all the proofs and doing all of the you know, bookwork and, and calculations and all the other things. I was like, whoa, this is like vastly different. <laughs> and it blew my mind because I also realized more so that there are so many ways to learn a technique or mm -hmm. a new skill. And it really has a lot to do with who you're learning with. 
and right. finding a teacher or a mentor that you really resonate with who creates, you know, makes it fun for you, um, makes it feel, you know, can make it feel easier or easy for you okay. and, um, and really engage in the process and, and, you know, hopefully finding someone who's, who's teaching, who really loves to teach. Right. Right. And that's some of the things that we've been doing in these workshops. Um, Drawing in Your Heart's Desire, which is the one I've been doing this last year, and a variation on that this weekend um, to envision a thriving 2023 for people to engage in some of those practices that we've been doing. Lovely. Amazing. Well, I will put your website in the, you know, area below and um, just thank you for sharing with us. And yeah, you all should check Ishkala out please can I can I show you examples of absolutely <laughs> of course <laughs> so yeah so just to give people a little bit more of an idea of some of my other work this is these are more paintings that I've created wow. over the years yeah this is an exploration of the dark masculine you've got the Mahakala and Garuda and some Nagas I won't explain or talk about or the story behind that right go and go and go um and then we've got this one this is called once i met a swan oh, oh, beautiful. oh i recognize that lotus yeah a little bodhisattva here and a little like yeah. shaman and beautiful snake. and this one some more oh. divine mother energy in this one with the beautiful. Wow. More dragons. <laughs> love dragon energy. And little baby here in the love, center. Love, love. Yeah, and the crystalline. Yeah, and the common fire. There's lots of Beautiful. Spheres. Oh my goodness gracious. Kids. Oh. Wow. And then the drawings are more of like, you know, coming back to the roots. And so some of the drawings from those classes might come out more as a mandala but they don't have to be like this one is kind of more mm. it's like it's symmetrical if you hold it like this or like this and you create right. mantras that are Beautiful. based on the meditations that we do together mm. and so this one is based on that mantra i am interconnected Beautiful. and then there's something like this this is i am prosperity Mm. and just like Beautiful. starting with the geometry starting with the flower of life and then basing a lot of organic shapes and forms and um and shading with yeah the shading uh, it correlates, is yeah it correlates with the curves and intersection points of the circles and mm -hmm. also some of the forms that come from the meditations um, and that's with graphite pencil or yeah this is graphite okay so yeah and just really exploring like the full spectrum of light and dark right <laughs> that's the fun part about yeah painting just black and white or drawing like that you know it's you know just light or darker that's the only question <laughs> yeah which can be very yeah. lovely and calming yeah it's fun yeah, it's fun sometimes just to explore through through um, through texture and 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 shading and and not use lines at all. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. That helps, I feel, for a lot of people too. And I joined you for on Facebook for the workshop you did connected with that um, event recently. Are you teaching? Do you have online programs as well? Like. Yeah, well, I I don't have a program. I don't have anything lengthy right now, mm -hmm. but I've been doing one or two day workshops. And um, yeah, so the, the main workshop I've been teaching is called Drawing in Your Heart's Desire. Mm -hmm. And that's what these these drawing mandalas are, are coming from. Yeah. And um, so we'll we'll do meditations for people to really drop into the heart space. 
Mm -hmm. Just relax and kind of reset the nervous system and, and then do visioning meditations to get visions for peace and then bring them through meditation and drawing the geometries. And um, it's a manifestation workshop, but it's yeah. also like there's, there's ways of manifesting that you need to be able to hold things lightly. And so that's some of the things that we go into in that class. Yeah. And then, um, and then this weekend, uh, we're going to do a clear heart fresh start. It's another drawing workshop. And that, that one that you tuned into was like a very like <laughs> condensed fast forward version of just part of what we're going to do in the workshop this, this Sunday, um, which is online and it'll be, um, one to 4 PM. Uh, okay. Pacific Standard Time for people to envision to to go over what 2022 was for them, mm -hmm. and um, and envision a, a bright 2023 and do some drawing to connect. And um, it's a little bit of a different energy for that class in terms of what we're doing or how we're manifesting. Mm -hmm. um, to bring awareness and uh, and balance to all of these different realms of our lives so that even if we have the intention or goal to um, bring a lot more uh, uh, bring to, to manifest something really special that we're you know that we already have our eye on to make sure that we're not over optimizing in a certain area of our life at the detriment of these other realms. Right. So um, yeah, just keeping in mind our intention in all the realms to Beautiful. create wellness for the next year. I love it. I love it. And uh, what was it? December 30th, I did a sacred circle day and we painted mandalas and did a very similar process. And I'm actually doing a day long, a day of Lakshmi on Saturday. But we'll put the link below. Awesome. I'll get this up right away. So um, yeah. So if you're watching, maybe you can join on Sunday for the visioning into. And I love that. I love it. It's, yeah, creating, it's creating art, but it's allowing art to be a part of, you know, weave it into this, the greater fabric of our lives and um, allow it to be what I think it's always been meant to be and, and has for most of you know, human existence until probably pretty recently, relatively speaking, but this, this way to connect to the other aspects of living, which aren't just the external material visible side, you know, the internal, the emotional, the energetic, the spiritual, um, we, we ultimately want both. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great practice of, of letting go. I feel. Yeah. So that, um, so Lovely. that we don't bring old stories to new experiences. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, that's a big theme. What do you not want to bring into this year, right? <laughs> Let's create some closure, send gratitude, and uh, and look ahead with kind of a clean slate. Yeah. I love it. Well, I'm going to let us say goodbye before this video gets too long and want to make sure I get it um, up and everything. But uh, thank you so much for allowing our introductory getting to know each other conversation to be recorded. And I know, um, I know people absorbed a lot from the words you spoke and your artwork and, um, and we share a lot of the same language so I love yeah. that too yeah definitely feeling that it's great <laughs> to meet you yeah yeah okay everyone make sure and explore Ishkala's world and thank you for being here thank you